Hello and welcome. My name is Arya Chidasi and I'm here with Ashyan Tashvir. Now my background is originally in psychology and now today I work with many entrepreneurs and startups across the world. But in particular today I want to speak about this whole philosophy of achievement. It has a lot of different terms, human potential, how do you live a life where you're thriving, where you're, you're prosperous perhaps. And if you actually look at the history in about the last 20 years, uh, from a psychological perspective, we've been looking at how people have uh, seen all of this, you could say suffering and misery, you know, world wars, a lot of challenging things. But more recently, we've been looking at, okay, how do you actually thrive? So while this has been looked at in that area, when you go to philosophy, when you look at philosophers, they haven't really looked at this. And that's where I personally uh, have found this work quite interesting. I mean, uh, I'm in a unique position having the privilege of working with Ashkan, you know, in our businesses. But from a personal point of view, his work has really made a difference to me and, and other people really close to me. And so I want to, you know, we, we want to bring up this new conversation, Ashgan. I mean, you've been working on for several years now uh, the, the whole being, from the being book, uh, human being, and now the third book, Becoming. Uh, but I'm interested for someone brand new, you know, let's just say you're brand new to this work. What is this thing we call the being discourse? Yeah, good, good. Thank you, Ari. Well, like, um, before we get to that, let, let me create a little bit of context, yeah? Um, as Martin Heidegger, the, a very a renowned philosopher of our time, um, who actually influenced me so much in my body of work, uh, says, uh, we are thrown into this world, yeah? Now, no matter what kind of a story you believe in, whether... Uh, it was an Adam and Eve, who basically you're the de descendants of uh, Adam and Eve, or you believe in evolution, uh, Darwinian way of thinking, or any other story that you have in your mind. We're not even going there. And the reality is you're here. You're here. You exist. You are under the influence of existence, the laws of existence. Yeah. So the, the acknowledgement of you exist and you have a unique experience of life is what matters like in the context of what we're going to discuss mm. today. Yeah. Mm. Now, in that, then you're being bombarded with tremendous amount of content. By content, I don't necessarily mean like some textual content or video content that you consume on social media. What I mean is... Um, every single different entities in this world, including yourself. Yeah, so you the, the cat, the dog, your pet dog, uh, the food that you take in, uh, different people that you interact with, the, the, the graphics on a billboard uh, as you walk on the street. There's so much content out there. Now, the thing is, how do you relate to every single content you see out there? Yeah, because because the way that we relate to them, the way that we perceive them, uh, it's going to Im influence mm. massively how we're going to act upon mm. the way that you're relating to yeah. different things. Yeah. Mm. So so there's a few actually big things that like I want to re break it down for everyone. So number one, this whole thing that we exist. So that's something we often take for granted. <laughs> we wake up in the morning and we're like, oh, here I am. But then the second piece you're saying is, I would also say it's similar to like a big data, as in we're bombarded, you use that term, right? We're waking up, we're looking to our left, our right, on our phones, etc. And then you're going, hey, that's actually happening, but sometimes we don't even pay attention to how we're engaging, is that? Is that, that what you that's mean? actually incorrect, yeah. So you can consider yourself as a kind of quite sophisticated computing machine. Mm -hmm. You're constantly consuming content relating to this content differently mm -hmm. and then uh, you're computing you're computing whatever it's there and then you're going to make your decision and you're going to take action and then those decisions and actions ultimately are going to um, somehow define your uh, your destiny. life yeah, yeah. yeah. it's going to and they're going to determine uh, at least in great part the results that you're going to produce mm -hmm. yeah 
So, so therefore, um, it, it's going to be quite important what meta content you're going to tap into. Now, like that's yeah. a kind of a, a not a very common term to use. Yeah. So if if we now are clear what do, what we mean by content, mm -hmm. as I said, like the trees, the, the dog, the cat, you know, all these different concepts that we deal with, uh, their content and. And therefore, it's very important for uh, a person to get clear with how he or she chooses to relate to each and every of these uh, these content out there. Now, that kind of framework as a, let's call it something like a bedrock, mm -hmm. uh, sits uh, at the very, very fundamental level of your consciousness, uh, it's going to um, provide mm -hmm. that platform so that then you can consume or relate to con uh, different parts of the content mm -hmm. you're uh, exposed to differently. Yeah, you know? and yeah. it's going to be really hard. You know, as you mentioned, it's it's a kind of explosion explosion of uh, big data. Yeah, uh, these and, days. and I think I don't want anyone to to get lost in that because even when we say these simple words like content, I mean, and you said you know cats and dogs and things, but it's when you wake up and then you start thinking about your work or mm. your, your relationship, you might have an argument with your partner or you're going, okay, how am I going to uh, lift my sales this quarter? All of these things are all part of the content, right? That's, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. So um, see that, that let me add this to the conversation. We do not have direct access to the truth of the matters, mm. you know, uh, and that's a kind of limitation to our perceptual system. Yeah. Now, all we can do is we can conceive things. We can perceive things and then we can conceive things. Well, perception here, I mean, you're going to tap into your sensory abilities, mm. sight and scent and hearing, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to receive something. You know, you're going to know something. Um, and then, then you're going to tap into your mental capabilities, mm. analysis, comparison, contemplation, reflection, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and and using that computing power, uh, then you're going to make sense of things beyond what your sensory um, system are immediately giving to you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, so therefore, there's going to be a gap between the reality of something and what you're going to receive or conceive at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Now, um, yes. So you wake up in the morning. You you need to make certain decisions. You need to go to work. You need to. I mean, before that, you need to have your breakfast. You need to interact with your partner if you have mm -hmm. one. So, so many contents are out there, and then you you need to get clear what is your relationship with with each and every of these different entities and content, yeah. Mm. Knowing that, the, you cannot access the 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 totality or the the objectivity of whatever that reality is. Yeah. Mm. So there's going to be that gap. So therefore, um, it, it it matters. It it extremely it's it, it's extremely important how you're going to relate to all these different things. Yeah? Mm. Now, it, it can be put this way that you being alive you 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 in your existence um you have to have constant perhaps intentional conversations with different things in this world mm -hmm. with yourself you need to have you are in constant conversation with yourself you are in constant conversation with others mm. all those content that we talked about yeah? yeah. Now here is exactly one of the main um, um, components of this whole being discourse comes up, which is authenticity. Mm. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about authenticity, lots of people may conventionally take it as like you being the real you, yeah, or your action being consistent with who you say you are. Um, and while it can be part of this conversation, but I want to zoom out. Now, when I talk mm. about authenticity, uh, I'm talking about congruence. E, uh, are your conceptions of different fragments of reality, those content, mm. are congruent with how they actually are? So, for example, if there is a, a piece of rope here, mm. are you going to perceive it as a piece of rope or a snake and then you're going to freak out? Mm. Which one? Yeah. For example, like 
uh, when it comes to money, which is a kind of man-made construct. It's something that we've created. Mm. You can consider money as content here mm. in this conversation. So is your conception of money is as congruent as possible that it could yeah. be, you know, or not? And then if, if you are inauthentic or incongruent, you have in, in, incongruent, conception of this content money in this case then it's very unlikely that you're going to be effective in the decisions that you're going to make mm -hmm. in that realm you know your yeah. financial economical decisions in life because yeah. you cannot become intentionally uh, effective in something that you are unaware of mm -hmm. yeah yeah so there's so many uh, things in there ashkan that i want to make sure that everyone is you know, following in terms of, uh, so number one, you were talking about all of the, the, that so many things we're interacting with in that content. And then you're actually bringing authenticity here, which I think for many of us at, at home, you can say authenticity has been this huge buzzword. Yeah, I'd even say a little bit bastardized. Everyone likes to use it. But in particular, you're bringing this component of authenticity in even how we're, we're dialoguing with ourselves and with yeah. others around how we relate to these basics and you use the word bedrock. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't say a component of authenticity. I would say uh, I am bringing a different distinction. Mm. Yeah. Um, how, how I would suggest us in, in this context to use the word authenticity. Mm. It's basically, we're talking about whether your conception of different fragments of reality, those content out there, that mm. whether you like it or not, it's a reality of the, mm. the your experience of life. You need to be interacting mm. uh, with different content out there. With, with When you go and buy the things from the grocery store, yeah. you're interacting with the cashier, you go to the bank, you go to work, you, 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 you need to collaborate mm. Uh, uh, with with your um, partners or or with your colleagues, yeah, you need to as a salesperson. Let's say you go out there and then you need to sell your vision or you need to sell your product to your potential clients, and that's mm. going to make it or break it for you financially because mm. mm. that's the source of your income. So, and then the list goes on. You, you need the interactions that you're going to have with your romantic partner, let's say. Mm. Uh, some miscommunications there is going to cause problem and I'm pretty mm. sure everyone had that kind of experience in their life absolutely yeah, yeah. so so yeah um, let's recap so what what we said is like you exist let's acknowledge that as a fact yeah and and then we said that as you exist or or let me rephrase it you exist and you're not the only entity that exists mm. you share this existence with other entities you know mm -hmm. with other entities whether they're alive or they're they're like like stones and objects and mm -hmm. everything out there so um now acknowledging that uh, you're not alone in in being in in this existence then you know that one way or another, you you have a relationship with all of these different contents and entities out there. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the way that you choose to relate to them, perceive and conceive of them, yeah, it it matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, in that, then we brought up the conversation of authenticity. Now, now that you have to relate to different entities or con I mean, like meanings or content, ideas, one way or another, do you have this concern? that your conception of all of these are as congruent as possible. Mm. And that's what we meant by authenticity. And yeah. I think in this, on a gut level, on a base level, most people would get this. If we are inaccurate or, or we are not congruent with what's actually going on, and from very little things, if you, if you, you could say were incongruent with that you had petrol in your tank and you try to drive it, and then that can be, you know, already having problems for you. Yeah. 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 So any any um, lack of awareness or um, misconception, mm. if you have misconception of something, if if that that, that I would consider in inauthenticity, mm. yeah, mm. and it's going to have an impact. Yeah. You're it's going to get in the way of your effectiveness. Whatever intention do you have that you want to fulfill, it may get in your uh, in, mm. in in your way. Mm. Yeah. 
now so now now that we're talking about authenticity of our um, perceptions and you know uh, conceptions uh, as I've mentioned earlier and you are in constant conversations you're in constant conversations with different things for example you're in conversation with yourself mm. and that is what I call um, in, 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 in the book, in the being discourse. So I have this, this construct, which I call it um, authenticity quadrant, yeah. where the conversations that you have with yourself about yourself, I call it self image. Self image, yeah. Yeah. So those are the conversations that constantly you have with yourself about yourself. Now, at the same time, then you have the com conversations about yourself with others, with the world. Yeah, and that's your persona. It's the persona that you project out there. Mm -hmm. It's it's how you you gradually develop the parts that you are willing to uh, project out there mm -hmm. and make it make it visible to to the others, so that they can perceive you based on what you're projecting out there, how you're manifesting yourself there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and that doesn't end there. Uh, you have you have constant conversations about the word or the content in the word to be exact with the word yeah so you have opinions and beliefs yeah mm -hmm. and then also you have come uh, you have conversations um about the word with yourself mm -hmm. yeah which i uh, call them opinions and beliefs just mm -hmm. to distinct them yeah so so therefore you exist you're not alone in your existence. You coexist with other entities, with the other contents. Therefore, you have to, you have to have some level of uh, interactions and relatedness with all these things that are out there. And the more that you expose yourself to all these things out there, uh, your universe, your mm. reality is going to expand more and more. Yeah. So, so there. Then we we talked about authenticity. Now that you need to relate to different things in the world, different meanings, different ideas, different uh, entities, content, we just mm -hmm. use that cluster for all of them. General, kind of yeah. a general term. So then, then you say that the authenticity or congruence of your conception of whatever that is matters. Yeah. 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 Now, some of us, because we have polished our relationship and we are in acknowledgement of how important it is to have mm. congruent, authentic conceptions of different fragments of reality. We live life from that viewpoint. And my studies show that um, um, mm. uh, the, the more accurate and valid your conception of the dif different parts of reality are, the more the higher probability there is for mm. you to fulfill the very intentions that you so care about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I love that i mean i think that if you go apply that to any area of your life again it's something that makes sense and i think as a philosopher you've articulated these things and you know i think everyone can agree there are some technical terms and things at the beginning but ultimately it's something you can experience and see if you don't understand how a relationship works or you're having all of these misconceptions mm. then it can easily get out of hand very quickly. Yeah. Um, business, I mean, personally, I've experienced it myself as well as thousands of the people we've worked with. The moment you're not understanding, if, if you're not, if you're having those misconceptions about how that aspect of business works, then it just doesn't, it doesn't function. So yeah. this is something where, how can you, you're something like whether you like it or not, right? Whether you're in it, whether you, you are choosing that or not, you're in that dialogue. Uh, but this is more about us being conscious and aware to then even start to you use the word polish and develop ourselves. Really, really great, Ashkan. So we've talked about authenticity. We've talked about how you're having all of these dialogues with yourself and then with others and then how congruent that is with the reality of things. I want to bring that to the scope of leadership, right? That's something not only uh, many people talking about these days, uh, but it's so relevant, I mean, in, in the work that, that I'm looking at with people leading their businesses, but then a lot of the times leading themselves. So how does this whole conversation move into the space of leadership? Hmm. Oh, very good. Well, the thing is, uh, let's, let's distinct that. Let's, let's see what, what, what we mean when we say leadership. Yeah. 
So you want to be of influence. That's, that's like in the simplest way that I can put it. You know, first with yourself, like you're powerful, you're a leader. If you have tremendous amount of influence over o- your own life, and then if you're doing well enough, then you may want to put your in a kind of position that you can cause leadership beyond yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, when it comes to um, uh, leadership, you being of influence, um, it's extremely important for you to know what you are, how you are, and who you are. Now, often we collapse this whole thing and then okay. we call it like your identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let me um, make it a little bit, uh, you know, easier to, you know, to flow. So when we're talking about what you are, we're literally talking about the most objective side of us. Let's say everyone's anatomy mm-hmm. follows a certain structure. Now, there are exceptions, but when it comes to the scientific perspective of that, then you know like that's why actually we could manage to come up with the exact anatomy structure mm. of a human being yeah so um so what we are is what constitutes us being a human being mm. yeah now so when when it comes to your anatomy it's the it's very easy today it was not in the uh, at some Five point in the history ago. yeah yeah, but now with the technology and everything we have available, we could manage to actually uh, work it out quite well. We we have a map that describes like what kind of mm. um, um, uh, skeleton structure we have. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I would say that from my observation, you know, this is one of the things you do from your in engineering point of view, right? In that, I think for everyone, it's obvious that we what we are is. A human being yeah. that's a sort of starting point but then what we mean by that you're then breaking it down into going okay yeah i mean what exactly do we mean by that and that's yeah. that's the starting point of how to even engage in this question yeah like let's let's look into it from a designer perspective or mm. engineer perspective so what constitutes being a human being and then you know you have two eyes and you have two legs mm. and etc etc from a physical standpoint so what we are is um, the those those kind of characteristics, attributes, properties that we have um, in common? So mm. those are our commonalities. Mm. We're all hence we are the same species. Yes. Yeah? yeah, and hence like dividing people based of the the, the color of skin and ethnicity mm. and etc cetera, etc cetera, would be ridiculous at par because at the end of the day there is this just one race human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah, so there is this one species. Let's put it that way. Now, but then when it comes to, um, let me let me stay there. Like what we are, like from a physical standpoint, it's then clear, at least nowadays for us, yeah, with the advancement of technology and science. But then also when it comes to our mind, mm. when it comes to our mind, what kind of um, common experiences we have, mm. you know, at the very very primal level. Then again, there is so much commonalities associated with it. See, for example, if you take fear, there's no one out there that can claim that I'm a fearless. We don't mm. have such a thing. We don't have a, such a person mm. that they cannot, they are incapable of experiencing fear. Mm. Fear. Yeah. Mm. Now there may be some exceptions, but then we're not going to talk about that. Mm. Um, so, but then, um, what, how, how we differ it's, it can be like how we, as an individual, we, we respond to fear differently. Mm. Yeah? So that's exactly where we, from what we are, we go to how we are. Yeah. Yeah? So therefore, you know, in, in what we are, there's quiddity, there's whatness. There is like the, the common characteristics or qualities that we share. Mm. And that makes us being part of the same species. Yeah? Mm. We all are capable of experiencing fear mm. we're all uh, capable of experiencing anxiety we're mm. all vulnerable mm. at least at some base level to the similar things like for example like if you're receiving this bullet in your body mm. yeah like it's going to have the yeah. 
it's 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 clear impact you know yeah yeah so so the experience of being a human being these things are clearly Mm. common yeah no matter where you are in the world no matter your culture you're born as this baby and essentially as a baby the moment you're born you can die and that that's one of one of the starting vulnerabilities yeah. uh, we need to feed ourselves so so how how i mean i visualize it from when you say that is if we look at what a, a flower is then there are certain qualities like its petals etc that all flowers have yes but you're talking and we can also say about the human anatomy there's one part but yeah. this other side this whether it's mind this this less physical side we have very clear common yeah, factors so, going so on. So exactly like what we have, like the, the physical characteristics that we have in common, we also have metaphysical characteristics mm. in metaphysical. common. Metaphysical, yeah. Yeah, so things like, for example, fear. Fear is not something you can physically touch it, mm. but it exists. Mm. You know what I mean? So, so therefore, um, what we are is the same almost. Yeah? But then how we are is different. How we are is then how I, as an individual, relate to fear, mm. differently to how you relate to fear. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, you, you, it's not just a matter of individuals. Like You can see it like from a cultural perspective as well. Because different cultures, they tap into different ontological approach. Like mm. They relate to the key content, mm. meanings, or ideas in life differently, different cultures. They relate to marriage differently. They relate to mm-hmm. God differently. They mm-hmm. relate to love differently. They relate to fear, mm-hmm. anxiety, responsibility, yeah. commitment, etc., etc., mm-hmm. differently. Yeah. So that gives me this thought of the perfect example in my mind is a snake, right? I think cross culturally, we as human beings, we have certain reactions to snakes, right? And we feel that fear. But then there are some cultures who make friends with the snakes or some, some would see it as food and they would eat them. And there's, there's all different types of ways we can relate to the same uh, input of yes. the snake. Yes, yes. So, yeah, um, therefore, we said that like there is whatness, like what, what we have in common. It makes us being of the same species. Um, and, and being in acknowledgement. Uh, when it comes to what makes us being a human being, it's a very important thing. Yeah? So you want to really look into that uh, piece of reality. You know, hence authenticity matters. Yeah. Now, if for example you look into the being discourse, then um, there is an ontological model. Simply put, is a series of qualities of human beings are outlined, um, are categorized into four different categories in that construct. Yeah. So, so that like, it's a kind of map mm. of the reality of human being or human being's qualities when it comes to the realm of performance, effectiveness, and particularly leadership, as you brought the conversation mm. around leadership up. You know? mm. So basically, we're saying that there are these qualities that are listed in the ontological model mm. that are quite crucial for us to have healthy relationships with, in another word, there is this alternative way, perhaps, to the one that you are, the way that you are already relating to them. There's alternative ways that you can relate to them differently. Mm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. First, mentally, from a mental perspective. So, in other words, you have a conception of responsibility. Mm. You have a conception of authenticity itself. Mm. You have a conception of courage, assertiveness, mm. proactivity, resourcefulness then so the 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 framework in one layer is uh, proposing alternative distinctions alternative perceptions of these qualities that are just listed mm. yeah now so, so i think in there because yeah. let's also connect those dots with you we're talking about the whatness and the howness yeah. right and and as we're speaking about you could say being a human being and and then even in leadership uh, i like to think about it like the car that you're driving you need to know what makes it up right and so so that whatness are all of these qualities that we share if we don't know what it is to be a human being we can't start to you could say optimize the the machine uh, mm-hmm. to use a rough analogy uh, but then the how is then how that 
how we are then engaging with, participating with every one of those qualities, that makes a difference to how well we then operate yes. and perform. You know? Yes, mm. yes, yes. So, so from a very, um, up, I mean, the, the most objective perspective, if you look at it, like we do have certain qualities in common. Mm. Again, as we said, like physically and metaphysically. Again, to bring it home, it's like, um, our health, when it comes to our health, physical health, there is this thing in medical science uh, that is called homeostasis. Mm. Homeostasis. So homeostasis is responsible or is the state of integrity of your um, body, mm. your physical health. We, our body has 11 different systems. And if these 11 different systems are operating at an optimum level, then you have that integrity, yeah? Mm. Like the bits and pieces of this system called your human body is working. Mm. It brings workability, it brings performance, and it brings effectiveness, mm. if, it, if you like, yeah? Now, if any of these bits and pieces, uh, if any of these systems or any organs that are involved in these different systems, if there's any glitch in the system, if, if there is any malfunction, then it's going to get in the way of the integrity and workability and effectiveness of the overall system mm. yeah mm. so this is again like a physical and metaphysical law that we are living under the influence of now the sooner we come to this acknowledgement and live life from this viewpoint that the integrity of our um, physical being physical systems mm. uh, and metaphysical uh, structure um, are being taken care of the the more the more well-lived life we can experience mm. yeah which mm. uh, from a ancient philosopher's perspective from aristotelian perspective uh, it's often called eudaimonic well-being or mm. eudaimonia yeah so it's something yeah. that you live a well-lived life and i think if you flip it the other way around it becomes far more obvious right so uh, as you mentioned, the 11 systems of the human body, if you have one of them going wrong, like the central nervous system, then, you know, you, you, your health is just off, yeah. you're living in pain, you're living, you know, and uh, however, what you're speaking about, and also from a philosophical point of view, is how we experience our life in its totality. Mm -hmm. And it, the same thing can happen, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Now, when it comes to the medical science, like uh, there's a massive literature around many of these malfunctions or like what we call them disorders, and then mm. the diseases. Yeah. Now, when it comes to when it comes to mind, then it gets far more, perhaps, complicated. <laughs> complicated yeah, because um, they're not visible, they're not touchable. Like you're mm. you're living in the metaphysical realm. When it comes to that, yeah, how a person would relate to a fee, that's not something readily accessible. While we can say that in some part of it, see, when it comes to fear, now that we keep talking about fee, as an example, is like, it's not something that hidden necessarily, mm -hmm. because see, even it doesn't just belong to human beings. A, a rabbit being chased by, by a predator mm -hmm. is going to experience fear, and an experience of fear has symptoms and signs associated with it. Yeah, the heartbeat is going to go up. the The breathing pattern mm. pattern is going to go uh, differently. Certain hormones going to be released. Mm. Yeah, and and the rabbit, you know, like it's measurable when it comes to the rabbit's uh, limbic system in mm. in her brain. So so therefore, it's not like that mysterious that we would like to see, at least in some cases. I mean, mm. in some of these qualities that we have more familiar familiarity with. But at the end of the day, it's not as physical like mm. as like, for example, if your kidney is not working now. Yeah. So and I'd also add that in the last what something like 15, 20 years, the whole neuroscience doing brain scans has made it even more clear, right? The amygdala lighting up mm. and this and that. So I think before that when people were only looking at the sweat and this and that 
then there was a bit like, oh, is it really going on? Is someone just sweating because they're hot from the room? Yeah. But then, you know, the, the culmination of all of that, at least from a psychological perspective, mm-hmm. far more clear today than it was even a few decades ago. Well, yes, yes, that, mm-hmm. that's correct. Now, at the same time, so there is this trap that we can fall into, which is like if we say that your mind is your brain, mm-hmm. like your mind doesn't equate to your brain only, you yeah? mm-hmm. know? So I don't think that we want to go to the details of that conversation, but at the end of the day, you know, your physical brain function mm-hmm. and you know that what what sits in psychiatry, yeah. that that's not something we want to talk about. But but at the end of the day, uh, your your what what people call it as mindset, mm-hmm. you know, and the way that you you know the collection of these perceptions that you you have picked, uh, and the, the the conceptions you have from different. Uh, parts of reality out there all that content that we discuss mm. it matters yeah. now when it comes to uh, then um like performance effectiveness and particularly leadership with that definition uh of like being of influence then um so the model uh, proposes uh, a, a number of qualities 31 to be exact it's basically intentional consciousness which is which i call awareness Mm -hmm. and then 30 other qualities yeah so now and then as i said like uh, the framework introduces alternative distinctions you know which are basically coming from all these studies of done on the highest achievers in this world like how do they um relate to responsibility Mm -hmm. you know how do they Mm, relate to commitment etc etc no that's a big part of it but that's not uh, it, it doesn't limit to that the, the that was study more of the, the starting house. point that the starting point yeah but you then you know like i've looked into this different mm, uh, cr- cross culturally i've looked mm. into how different um cultures how different groups are amongst us human beings related to some of these qualities as well yeah. mm. now so when it comes to then whatness we can't do much but to acknowledge them mm. with full vulnerability yeah the sooner we acknowledge them the better and and but then when it comes to how we are or how we relate to various different aspects of being or these content i'll call these call these aspects of being you know um then the good news is we are transformable we can um, fundamentally change the way we relate to any of these qualities. Mm. Mm. We, can, we can change the way that we relate to love. We can change and transform the way that we relate to our romantic partner. We can uh, change and transform the relationship we have with responsibility or commitment. And that's a good news because imagine that we were this fixed object in terms of our metaphysics. Mm. Yeah, the way that we relate to all these qualities. I, imagine that you were doomed to be the way that you are, yeah, and you couldn't, you, you didn't have much say in how you you would choose to relate to various mm-hmm. content in the world, particularly in this context, these aspects of being, these qualities, yeah, that they constitute mm-hmm. human being. So, um, and that brings us like. I mean, do you brought up the conversation around leadership, mm. and we said that leadership being is of influence, but then you can't be of influence if you're relating to certain of these certain qualities um, in an unhealthy manner, mm. in a way that it's not going to bring workability. Mm. Yeah, let's for example say if you're relating to responsibility as solely um, burden duty obligation you're carrying this resentment like irresponsibility is something that is imposed on you not that you have chosen something like that your experience of life is going to be extremely radically different to a person who relates to responsibility as um, a gift of autonomy as this gift that you can you have a say in how things go even if it's that like one percent or two percent mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so you tap into your relatively high level of autonomy 
you're living life from this viewpoint that you're an active agent in your life as mm-hmm. opposed to living life from this viewpoint that you're a passive victim that life is occurring to you all the time now this mm-hmm. doesn't mean that i'm saying that you're the source of everything that is happening in your life that's not accurate that's not authentic mm-hmm. no in many many cases when for example like um when uh, you're dealing with uh, your angry neighbor your cheating partner your psychopathic boss at work yeah so <laughs> we're not saying that you're source of the problem there we're saying that you can be you can choose mm-hmm. to be this a primary cause in the matter mm-hmm. Uh, regardless of the source mm. now this is the thing that this is just an example when when i was looking into some of these highest achievers in the world they have generated a tremendous amount of ac- accomplishment and they could influence not only their own life but also they they uh, they could manage to expand or influence mm. the shared reality yeah by their inventions by the things that they've added to it by creating construct ideas systems etc etc this is a very core quality mm. yeah mm. amongst others mm. that i've seen that is quite common they yeah. don't leave life from this viewpoint that your is just life is occurring to you and you are this victim yeah so mm. but let's pull together some of these nodes ashan i mean because if we go all the way back you were talking about how do we all dialogue with our the content mm. and then now and we've gone all the way to go okay when we start looking at that whatness so the being of responsibility is mm. one of our whatnesses yep. right that as a human being we all need to be dealing with our responsibility whether we're you could say shirking you could say backing off from it or we're yeah. moving towards it so there's clearly different ways we can relate to that mm-hmm. yeah uh so so let's let's sort of recap those things how how can someone someone sitting there see i, I think that there maybe some of us out there going well hold on a second i don't think about responsibility that much and mm-hmm. i mean that that this is not even a thing maybe i'm not in a position of leadership like how, how would you speak to to someone like that Well, if you want to stay with the responsibility for 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 some a bit more time, mm. see, the thing is, maybe many of us don't really think about responsibilities, mm. but as self-interested entities, as as self-interested being, at least phenomenologically, basically, it's a common human experience that. we actually care about our rights mm. we we feel entitled sometimes so but then the thing is like if you're going to have right then you need to have responsibilities too mm. Mm. it goes hand in hand otherwise your right becomes someone else's responsibility mm. and then you may think that oh cool you know like i can be lazy and i can post, you know i can pass it out outsource yeah. it yeah. to others but then at the same time right at the time that you're doing that you're also relinquishing power or relinquishing control and influence mm. to mm-hmm. a to a great extent if you're not the one who's taking care of that thing for yourself then you're relying on some other person to do it mm. then you're relinquishing um your power at yeah. the same time yeah. this is another thing that see um the these highest achievers they they often put themselves in this position that instead of them constantly being influenced or impacted by uh the circumstances mm. there are the ones who influence the circumstances mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah yeah and even even in at a time that they they can be quite disarmed they often leave life from this viewpoint that i'm going to go and then find the tiniest thread of a string to pull it and change the course even if it's like so little mm. Yeah. yeah yeah and yeah. I, i think that even you highlighting this because look i think vastly some people are going to be in this thing of like no i i'm dealing with responsibility every day mm. maybe maybe you literally have a title at work that you're uh, a mm-hmm. leader but then there would be others who go yeah i don't really see my responsibilities that it are but i think that one point of your work is actually bringing it up and getting people to go hey you 
you're actually interacting with how responsible you're being mm. you know whether it, it it could start with your dog or your cat mm. uh, all the way through to your your children all the way through to running a business but even you being consciously aware of that and then looking at how mm. you're you are relating to your responsibility is a type of starting point that's that that's correct yeah. yeah and see you know like the the type of responsibilities we um take um they, they have a massive influence or they create bigger opportunities for us or mm. bigger pool of opportunities for us to make our life meaningful mm. the the more responsibility you take, the more meaning you, your life may have. Yeah. Mm. Now, but so responsibility is just one of the conversations Wonderful. we're having. Yeah. yeah. So we were talking about um, the what we are mm-hmm. and what constitutes being a human being, at least from mm-hmm. a metaphysical perspective, in the scope of performance, how mm-hmm. we perform, how we participate in life, how we contribute to this game mm-hmm. named life, mm-hmm. um, and the effectiveness and the leadership. Mm-hmm. Now, then we said that. Um, then your howness is like how you choose to relate to your whatness. Mm. Yeah? Not only your own whatness, but also like the whatness of all those content mm. out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what is my um, how I'm how I how I am relating uh, how I, how am I relating to uh, money? Mm. How am I relating to banking system, mm. taxation system? How am I relating to academia? How how am I relating to scientific discoveries? Um, how am I relating to media? What is being said out there? Mm. Yeah. How how am I relating to various different parts of the governments, and and many 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 other things? Yeah. So so therefore, the moment that we come to this realization that you are responsible meaning that you have options, you have autonomy over how you choose to relate to various different things, then you, you, you may start living life from this viewpoint that, oh, wait a moment, I'm transformable. Mm. I can change. I can transform. I can fundamentally relate to any of these things, including relating to myself differently. Mm. Yeah. You may be this person who's quite shy. You may be this person who know yourself to be not very confident in life, etc., etc. But in the moment that you know that, no, well, that can change. Hmm. Now, how we can talk about it later, but but the 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 the, the idea that you're not doomed to be the way that you are you know we have we, all of us we have different parts of our shadows we have different parts of us that we may dislike mm. we may might not be satisfied with you know I, I actually like in thousands of thousands of hours working with different people um, people that are quite financially prosperous or people that they are relatively mm. poor or disadvantaged uh, disadvantaged um, people with high academic status people with like mm. a different number of people mm. from different ethnicities and, and groups and um, we all have things about ourselves that we're not fully mm. happy with or satisfied with yeah. now the moment that we realize that um, you can relate to yourself differently you can relate to different content in this world differently your own qualities differently then that's a that's a good news yeah mm. now um and then this brings us to this very possibility that you know you are capable of learning anything that you may need to fulfill the very intention that you're setting for yourself. Mm. Just be with that for a moment. You can learn whatever you may need to fulfill whatever intention that you're setting for yourself. Mm. Now, this is not going to guarantee, yeah, there's no guaranteeing things, but in life, but you can massively increase the probability of you hitting your target. Yeah, and I, I think that, see, even you bringing up that whatness and then the howness separation, now, those are the, you could say, the technical terms. I think that uh, you could say out there, and even from, from that more uh, psychology point of view, nature versus nurture is, is brought up. Uh, what's what's the thing that's in your personality yeah and 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 then you'll bring up transformability now without going into the weeds of all of those arguments i think that the quite simple i think everyone listening 
knows intuitively that clearly there's some things that perhaps we are you could say born with or there's there's some tendency something going on but then clearly it does not stay that same for the whole life people do change transform i think we've all experienced that in different ways but a lot of attention tends to go on you know how how we are from at birth and everything and there's very there's relatively little uh, structured uh, uh, and methodical approaches into well hold on a second how does this transformation happen mm. and and as you were speaking i mean many different stories we get from our community of coaches and everyone who uh, uh, work on this with people i remember one person saying i realize that i'm not just fixed that way i'm a work in progress and then his eyes were so relieved and you know he sort of uh, breathes differently mm. And so without us even going into how, even acknowledging that there is this whatness and howness is, it, it can have a, a decent impact on people. And yeah. I think many people often forget it or miss it. Yeah. 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 That, that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And see, this, this may seem quite simple, but not necessarily easy. You know, you may want to see these as common sense. Mm. Well, it is. But then why they're not that common, mm. you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So, and that's why, you know, like we, we're not necessarily coming up with new things. It's just a new way of articulating what has been there, uh, but it's still powerful. Mm. Absolutely. Like, it's, 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 it's going to be healing many of this, I mean, this, this suffering that we may go through from an individual perspective, or this lack of accomplishment, that it's a thing. It's a common mm. human experience. It's a thing for us. Really great, Ashton. Yes, it can be quite common sense. But let's let's briefly recap this. So we have the what you are being, the whatness, and then that howness, which brings up the potential transformability. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then can you start to go, because you mentioned three, right? So can you go yeah. into what's then the third one? Okay, so it's who-ness. Now, this one is not going to be as describable as the other two. Uh, it's quite mysterious. It's like every single human being has this black box. Mm. It's a very mysterious black black box. There's yourself. You know, often I used capital S in my writings for this self. This is like the very innate part of you mm. that you have access to. And, and you are there to go and then dig and then try to um, get to know it and then manifest it to the world. So while when it comes to whatness, it's very studyable, it's something that we can articulate and we have it in common, we can talk about it. The howness is a different ways that we can relate to the content in this world, particularly now we talked about these various different aspects of being. When it comes to who-ness, is there's this thing in, in you that is to be projected out there. Mm. Yeah, and it's very unique to you. I often relate to it as unique being. Now, uh, often we use the word identity, but then you know, like we're talking about all different all these all these different attributes coming from v- any of these three, mm. and then we, we just call them identity. Mm-hmm. See, for yeah. example, like when it comes to the first one, everyone has a date of birth. Everyone has a date of birth. They are born in a particular time in history. Now, you can't change that. I mean, like, you need to be just accepting it. Um, but then, for example, like, you have your name, your first name. But your first name is something that is assigned to you. And there is no axiom. There is no primacy to it. Mm. Your parents, based on whatever they thought that is going to be beautiful, they named you something, and then you can change it. Mm. So therefore, like to you know, we we call both of them identity on your identification card, identity card. But then, uh, what what we're talking about here is like you 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 may need to relate to them differently. Yeah. So there are certain things that are so engraved in the stone you mm. can't change it yeah it's like something like your age Mm. according to the calendar but then uh, there are things like your name which you can easily change it like uh, that's like basically now 
Uh, but then, you know, when it comes to howness, then we, we talked about age, yeah? Mm. So your age, according to the calendar, is one thing. But is every 60-year-old person same in terms yeah. of health or how they aged? No, it like, depend, depends on many different factors, including mm. your diet um, and how healthy you lived, etc., etc. Then two 60-year-old per people would be different. That's how you, you know, relate. And that's exactly where, again, when it comes to uh, howness, it's like we've seen it many, many times, uh, especially with social media, people can see it more often that many different people that they are, they've been suffering from obesity, Mm -hmm. they're quite overweight and everything. They go through certain transformation processes and then they transform their body and their health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, so when it comes to who-ness, it's like this very innate thing in you, which I call a unique being, and that's something to be projected out there. Yeah? And, and, and it, that is the thing that uh, all this work that we do to learn what we are and to go through transformation and choose how we want to be with regards to the, uh, those qualities, it's at the end of the day to serve this is my metaphysical standpoint. Yeah, it is to serve you being able to tap into, l- get to know what, sorry, who you are down deep there, and projecting it out there. That's going to lead to your unique contribution to the world. Mm. Now, this is this is the part that like, if you don't manage as an individual to tap into in your very unique being and then projecting it out there the the whole life existence is going to miss something it's a liability to humanity because you may be the one who could sing the song that no one else could or you may you could be the one who could in- cure this incurable disease that no one else could you could be the one who could invent this device that no one else could so the that's exactly where your existence matter and then that, that's the thing Arya you know that that's the part that I from from a philosophical standpoint I so care mm. that's that's part of the thing that part of my why that I'm doing all these things mm. that I'm doing yeah so and 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 then there is like various different schools of thinking that or thought that they try to tell you who you are Mm. and that's the thing that i would have a massive um, problem with Mm. it's really hard to tell the person who you are because it's them that they have access to but then they can't get there they're not going to go through that kind of self-discovery process Mm. unless they don't have a healthy relationship with awareness authenticity responsibility etc etc so there's going to be an untapped potential there Mm. that is not being projected out there now if you look into any of these highest achievers as we mentioned look into many artists throughout the history it's a bit of a mozart let's say many of the philosophers the thinkers many of entrepreneurs they actually made our life easier Mm. Uh, invented devices etc all these inventors um, they actually tapped into their very unique being, mm. yeah, you know, and then they projected out there, and then yeah. that became their unique contribution mm. to the war. Mm. I, I think what you're saying again is this repeated pattern of something which is sounds extremely simple on one level, but it has such a big impact. And and if if we look at it even in today's day and age, right, like how many people do do you know? who are actually in the pursuit of expressing that unique being, mm. right? And I think now, uh, roughly speaking, I think some of the industrial revolution and things going, hey, let's go and build these factories and let's work as cogs in the wheel. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't uh, put that so down because it had a big role to play. But at the same time, I think that uh, tapping into our mm. unique being and expressing ourselves out there, it became That's secondary true. But, but nowadays, it's actually, f- p- perhaps it's even odd or weird, like it, it's not the norm, definitely, yeah. for someone to put this front and center. Yeah, and you know, that, that's one of the other traps that we fall 
um, into at times we reduce human beings um, to their functionality and that's a kind of fallacy that we often are in yeah mm. so for example if you take a tool like a hammer let's say yeah mm. so what is a hammer to you as a human being you just care about its functionality isn't it like you say hammer is something that you use to nail that you know. mm. uh, so but then there's more to that hammer even that as an object, there's far more to it. It has colors, mm. it has like style, it has like beauty, it has like you can look into it from an aesthetic perspective mm. and, and many, mother, many other uh, dimensions. Now, when it comes to human being, we fall into this trap at times, particularly in the corporate world, in, in the b- workplace, uh, that we reduce human being to its functionality. So who you are, well, I'm an engineer with this amount of experience working in IBM and Oracle. But is that all to do with that person? The totality, yeah. totality of that person. And, and that actually matters because this is it's not just a, a domain knowledge or skill sets of that engineer that we need. We need far more things from him or her to be brought into the workplace. Yeah how that person cares, how that person is responsible, how that person mm. is committed when uh, he or she is committing to completing the task, mm. how caring that person is when, when he's interacting with our customers, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So therefore, there's more to a person than to just their technical fun- functionalities. Mm. I think this is so interesting and th- there's actually multiple layers even in this conversation we're having because... In this one, we're talking about how any person relates to a human being itself. If we only see them as that hammer, see them as their labor, their human resources, well, actually, I would say that there's a decent number of leaders and or politicians, etc., who, like, we've been focusing so much on, okay, let's just get more labor, more labor. And then if we look at it from the human being's point of view, they, they may, for example, miss out on a lot of well-being that relate to everything else oh, apart that, from that's that. correct yeah mm. many many people actually that the pursuit excellence or perfection mm. uh, they let their vision consume them severely that's why you see many of these highest achievers actually while they're being radically effective in some areas in their life in some other earlier areas of their life is not doing any well mm. yeah so they're compromising some other dimensions of their life so instead of pursuing wholeness they're pursuing excellence now i'm not saying it's a wrong or right thing i'm saying that the there are consequences associated with any Mm. of these pathways again goes back to how you relate to life in general Mm. your existence how you relate to different content out in the world how at the end of the day you would set your value structure to be Mm. yeah from an Mm. axiological perspective so basically what comes first and second for you uh, what your priorities are at the end of the day are going to mm. um, in great part determine the, the 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 quality of your experience of life yeah yeah and i think so to sort of bring it together from what we started with i was speaking about how do we thrive as human beings i was talking about how we've moved through you know the the last you know sets of decades and I think that this whole unique being conversation is such at the crux of that, that uh, it, it brings so much to a person's life to acknowledge that there is this thing within them that to, to express, to contribute, and that's sort of a starting point. Um, but now let, let's move, because you've mentioned from that, and, and now we have this who-ness, how-ness, and what-ness. But let's now look at that transformability because you've brought that up and I think that many people would be going, okay, so we sort of get the outline, but can I actually transform or how does it work? So, mm. so how do you speak about that? Sure. Yeah, so this is the exciting part <laughs> because, um, yeah, so see, you know, there are schools of thoughts out there that they merely saying that you're a fixed object. Yeah, this is your temperament. This is how you are. It's better for you to make decisions in your life that are quite aligned with who you are and by who you are they also include their temperament characteristics yeah this is how you're born you're an extrovert you're an introvert whatever you are it's better because transformation is impossible or very hard it's better for you to to make for example occupational choices 
or choose the life partner or whatever basically you want make your own decisions according to who you are mm-hmm. yeah when they collapse whatness holiness and happiness um and that can bring its own limitation that 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 metaphysics that mm-hmm. that kind of meta content that kind of ontological approach yeah that that paradigm mm-hmm. um it has its own limitations obviously it may break your wings to fly yeah mm. now on the other side then there is this uh, schools of thinking particularly like nowadays that they go far beyond transformability they talk about mutability it's like as if like you are who you say you are in its totality and then they extend that to your how does it madness mm. yeah you are to define yourself and and you can change whatever you wish beyond what the laws of existence are yeah so that that's like the other end of this mm. spectrum yeah now and then some you know, they they take that to this affirmation type of a style of um um self conversations that you just say that you are you be positive you be mm. positive and go and hustle and da 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 and then life is going to bring you all yeah. these uh cherries and you know flowers now what we're talking about here is no we are transform transformable but but that only is going to be possible only and only if you acknowledge your whatness first as a human being which species you are see you don't have wings you can't fly the acknowledgement of that then led us to go and then think about like okay so now that we know that unequipped we cannot fly but we have desire to fly what what we can do we can invent helicopters and airplanes etc etc mm-hmm. yeah parachutes and so now some may argue like there's this facile argument that oh see you're saying that we need to be in acknowledgement with the laws of existence for let's say for example gravity no actually if we wanted to succumb to that then we couldn't invent air- airplanes well i'm not suggesting that we should succumb to that I'm saying that we need to surrender to that these are two different things. Mm. When we acknowledge when we are in acknowledgement that there is such a thing called gravity and the formulas of physics then when we take them seriously then we can go and say okay so let's see this is not like it's not like the airplane is going against gravity is actually acknowledging gravity in a very very precise manner mm. with this speed with this velocity with this angle etc etc and then then we can actually leverage mm-hmm. the existing laws of existence yeah. and then we can basically achieve the thing that you want hence effectiveness so therefore when it comes to transformation it's ex- extremely important for us to start from the very that bedrock of what constitutes us being human being what kind of attributes you have we talked about some of them that are outlined in the ontological model so it's very important for us to know where to look at mm-hmm. yeah something is not working in my life the integrity of my life is not in place I, i can see i can zoom out and i can see my dissatisfaction certain things in my relationship is not working certain things in my finances is not working certain things in my interactions with others not not working i'm experiencing depressed i'm mm-hmm. i'm 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 succumbing to this anxiety that's being created for me mm-hmm. yeah I'm putting all these expectations on myself but then I can't manage to fulfill them. Mm-hmm. So once you become present to all this and then you choose to tap into this ontological model this 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 metaphysics or meta content that no see I can learn the things that I need to learn and I can adopt the ways of being uh, and I can transform them yeah so that they can fit into um the fulfillment of my very intentions mm-hmm. even the fact that like we're talking about your intention like you need to know what your intentions are and that's a hell of a thing on itself mm-hmm. yeah sometimes we don't know what we want mm-hmm. so therefore uh what i would say to a transformation is like it's very important for us not to be confused and know where to look at and i'm not saying that the ontological model of the being framework is like the only thing that you want to look into mm. but 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 there's so much there for you to look into um use it as a kind of a mirror mm. to 
um, the people can use it as a mirror so that they can say, see themselves in that. Mm. And it's going to reveal their, their strength points, like the, the parts that they have relatively healthy relationship with. And also at the same time, their shadows, the troubled parts, the, the parts that are getting in their way, achieving the things that they want. Yeah. Now, when we talk about shadows, it may seem very ugly and monstrous and, and maybe in part it is. There are troubled parts of us mm. we want to escape from. We don't we want to cover them up. Mm. We don't want to bring them to the surface. But at the same time, we can relate to them as our growth potential. Mm. That's exactly very like if vulnerably you acknowledge that there are areas in your being and, and your uh, like in your being that are not working for you. Mm. They're not contributing into the integrity of your life and the integrity of your being then that's a starting point you you then know that these are sitting there you are in acknowledgement and then you take them as your growth potential go okay i'll go and i'll address it mm. Mm. yeah you, you've mentioned that in passing but i think that it's really important to highlight this component and and i know that many people in our communities have actually brought this up you see when you go to that more affirmation style thing going like okay or motivation as well okay i can do this i can be that um let me let me wake up and go okay i'm going to hit my target and everything but in reality we deal with a lot of really challenging stuff like turmoil and mm -hmm. adversity and everything and and now i think that sometimes we go the other way and be like okay let's be pessimistic <laughs> yeah. everything is like this but no, really having this approach of, okay, let's start with the authenticity of are we even relating to these situations, you know, yeah. as they are in reality, and then tapping into how we're being as, okay, this is a, a place that I can start with because I'm a human being going through this yeah. these issues. I'm not just starting from, from anything. Yes, you know? mm -hmm. yes. No, then the good news is like you, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And the, one of the intentions that when... I started this whole being discourse and then creating the framework and all the layers within it, including the ontological model, the outline uh, of uh, uh, all these qualities and then creating the distinctions, et cetera, et cetera, was where do I start? I know that like my life is a crap. I know that, you know, like I, 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 there are so many different parts of my life that are out of integrity. They're compromising my quality of life. So... And I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm sick and tired of being in pretense and being invulnerable. I want to put the guard down. I want to empty my cup, and I want mm -hmm. to see what's what's going on there. But where to look at? So, there the ontological model, the series of qualities, can be quite helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, like after the first book, being which is more technical and is quite like close to seven hundred pages. So I've worked on the human being book, which has a much smoother narrative and, you know, like easier to digest. And uh, like that was designed for a broader audience and, you know, like the audience that are uh, listening to us now. So they can actually start with, with that book. They can, they can look into these old qualities that are described in the book, uh, where to look at. And, and then, you know, like we, we go through like how to transform, et cetera, et cetera, as well. Uh, and my recent book, actually, let me bring the book here. Yeah. So this is this is uh, becoming the emergence of being. So this this book, as you know, and we're telling uh, everyone else, like an audience. So this book is a fiction book. It's a fiction book mm -hmm. that um, is a story of um, um, this person called Bjorn Haley, and. Um, mm -hmm. He, he shows massive level of resistance to transformation in the beginning. He, on the surface, like he, he has all these lucrative career, he has loving fiance, and somehow um, uh, you, you can say financial stability. But down deep there, he's, um, he's a stock, he's confused. And, and basically the, the, the book uh, walks the, the reader through all these journeys that um, uh, Jor Joran Haley goes through 
Uh, not only we talk about it being discoursed and uh, that he ends up working with a coach mm. that like uh, they have all these in continuous intentional conversations coaching conversations they go through things also he he gets trained in like how the different parts of the framework works and um, also we we show different aspects of uh, his life in the mm. book uh, like his upbringing like the relationship he had with his uh, fiance with his parents and there are lots of stories um, beyond the being uh, conversation in the book yeah, I would uh, highly mm. recommend uh, you guys to, to read this book the book is available already for pre-order it's, it's out there and uh, we'll put the link there so that you know yeah, if, if you're interested you can go yeah. and then read the book the Kindle version is there the, the printed version is also there and we're soon uh, a while the book is actually published recently soon we're going to have uh, the the mm. official launch day in on, on online and yeah. we're going to have people mm. joining us. and i think personally i mean see uh, i think before i met you ashkan then when i was reading stories and things and maybe some of you can relate to this when i was reading stories and experiencing them it was more like oh that's someone else's story yeah but when i met you uh, so many of these different and actually in the background here so many different novels and everything that ashkan uh, have been impacting ashkan and what i really got was the uh, ability for these stories to really go down in the depths of our being and shift us because often it's it's beyond language or it's it's sometimes difficult like we're, we're spending this time yeah. doing our best to articulate these things but they, they go so much deeper so yeah i mean that that's what i found with this book is that you you walk yourself through another human being going through that yeah. transformation process yes yes see you know like um, the people that they know me they, they know that like uh, i've uh, studied philosophy and now i'm i'm being this emerging philosopher trying to communicate things with people but then um more than actually reading or studying philosophy itself helped me to become the person i am today reading philosophical novels actually helped me yeah and and that's a thing that uh, i knew that at some point i will start writing fiction as well and uh, this is just the beginning of a big journey i'm going to have um, as we discussed it before um yeah so i uh, like this is this is just the beginning of the conversation but definitely i'm committed to create uh, the being conversation and beyond like with a uh, larger audience and make it relatable to them so that they can benefit from this whole body of work that I'm working on. Um, yeah, so once, once you know where you're at, like how are you relating to different aspects of being, then you want to see what your intention is. What is it? Like, for example, in the book, uh, Becoming the Emergence of Being, Joran's main intention in life is like to say goodbye to his corporate career and start his own business. Mm. Uh, and then he's dealing with like hesitations and doubts and you know he goes through wavering yeah. and lots of different things so then your intention what exactly you want to um, fulfill then it's going to determine how you want to become so basically you create an as is model of yourself and then according to your intention then you are going to see okay so how you want to become mm. so that it increases the probability of you being able to fulfill that very intention see for example like if if your intention is just to stay fit you you may need to go through a completely different um steps going to the gym and have your diet you know like getting a personal trainer or do it yourself yeah. in comparison with like if your intention is to become an olympic mm -hmm. athlete mm -hmm. yeah so that that that's going to be quite differently yeah. yeah and i think this makes sense no matter what area of your life i mean when we speak to entrepreneurs the vision that they have for their business they know very well that they they need to become a different version of themselves mm. Uh, to have that business running you know for people with their for example your your own finances your wealth people know that even if they want to build a properly portfolio they need to be in, they need to how their being needs to be transforming yeah. Yeah. Uh, relationships you know you can you can really Definitely. map out anything mm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah and and the thing is like i'm i'm starting these series of conversation beyond textual content beyond the book 
that I've been working on. I'm going to be more uh, online on the YouTube and our own platform so that uh, we, can, we, we can create more and more of these mm -hmm. type of content and we're going to make it more tangible um, so that the broader audience out there, they can benefit from the free content that we're going to be creating mm -hmm. from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so we've been through quite a decent number of different conversations. Yeah, we hope that you had as much joy as we did going through them. This is inside the commitment to make this body of work far more accessible to you uh, all out there and, and in very many areas of your life. Now, please leave a like, a comment if you want to see more, if there were particular aspects that really made a difference to you or if you had questions because we do read that and it gives us feedback on yeah where to go next. So until next time, we look forward to seeing you again. We'll catch you soon.